Today, I think it's a first for me that I am at the stream that has some native trout and I don't have my rod, my lures, I'm not wearing my waders, I'm just walking around here and making kind of educational stuff for me and also for you. It feels weird because I would love to fish, but we are not allowed to fish for native trout from the 1st of October to the 1st of January. So I'm just enjoying the views, looking at the spots that I haven't been yet. Maybe I'll find some new nice spots for spring and summer. And also I've decided to answer a few of your most common questions that are not fishing related because a lot of you write me private messages about what gear do I use for filming my videos and how I use it. Since it's not easy to answer all of you, I think this will be easier. I'll go very basic on this because I know a lot of you are not that interested in movie making and filming and you just want to capture the best moments. So I'm not gonna get into the details that much. So far I walked like a few kilometers maybe, maybe one and a half. The water level here is low. I haven't seen any nest actually, which is kind of weird because I'm in the upper part of the stream. Anyways, the views are fantastic. I already found a few spots that I will definitely try on spring and summer. first thing you need is of course camera. You could go with your phone. If your phone is two years old and it's one of the flagships, you're good. But it's impractical. If... Shut up. If you're doing only stationary fishing, then it's okay. You put it on some kind of tripod and you leave it there. If you're ice fishing, carp fishing or whatever, you're just sitting there, you could use your phone and that would be enough for the quality. The problem is, phones usually don't have that much memory in them. Also, you don't have much batteries. You need to carry a power bank or something like that. The second most common option that most of us use is action cam. The question I get the most is what action cam do you use? Now, there is three action cams you can use. Six, seven years ago, there was only one. That was GoPro. Now there is GoPro, DJI Action, and Insta360 just released Ace Pro. Basically, there is no much difference in which one you choose. Tips I can give you, if you go with a GoPro, you should buy 10, 11, 12, whatever the current model is, I'm not sure. All of those are good already. They are reliable. If you go below, GoPro 10, you might get some issues. It will not record audio, it will not record at all, although it shows that it's recording, but you will lose your files. So GoPro 10 or later is fine. DJI, same quality, basically all the same stuff. There is four models. This is DJI Action 1, the first one. It's good enough for practically anyone. If you do not color grade a lot, if you do not do post-production. If you're just filming, putting on some kind of music, uh, maybe a little bit of talking head, what I'm doing right now, this is plenty and it's plenty for me. Uh, if I would to upgrade, I would upgrade to the last one, the DJI Action 4, because it has 10-bit color and a few more functions. If you go with DJI Action 1, you skip Action 2. Action 2 is no good. It's modular, you can attach batteries, all the stuff, lenses. It's not practical, you will lose that shit and it's just you take it out of picture. DJI Action 3 and the latest Action 4 are great. And also Insta360, they just released the Ace Pro. That thing is also good. It's kind of similar to GoPros and DJI's. My tip is you get the one you can find cheapest. If you're watching this video, that means you're not that interested in the filmmaking itself and you will not need the latest and greatest tricks and stuff that cameras can do. Just go with the cheapest one from the list I've mentioned. Now the newer models. 
Same goes for, for GoPros and DJI's. Few functions they have that I wish mine had. Horizon lock function, meaning if I tilt a little bit this way or that way, the view in the camera will not tilt. It will stay horizon locked. And other feature would be 10 bit color. Because I'm doing a little bit of color grading. This is how my video looks normally. And this is with color grading. Doesn't matter if I'm using this camera or my main camera, which I talk about later. I'm color grading a little bit. When you have 10 bit color, it's better than when you have 8 bit color. Just more color you can work with but if you're not doing that don't think about it too much you need extra batteries one battery will not take you long if you it's constant recording it's around one hour and you will run out of the battery and most likely you will not film the best frames of that day so i have two extra batteries for this one you can also get a power bank and keep it somewhere warm if it's winter Keep it somewhere warm, close to your body, go with the cable and you will have extra battery and that will help too. Other thing you want to consider when using action cam, that action cams doesn't close focus. This is my main camera, it's a mirrorless camera, more expensive, I'll tell about it later, but the thing is this, I can do this, it's focused on me, I can do this, now it's still focused on me. Action cams focus on everything all the time. And if you're close to it, if you wanna do something like I'm doing right now, talking head, you will not be in focus. You can buy a close focusing filter that goes on your lens and that will help a lot. But again, it's another thing you need to think about. Of course, chest strap or head strap, I prefer chest strap because I can see the level of my camera and what I'm filming pretty much. On the head it's better in one way, when I'm hooking the fish and I'm fighting with it, I often take my hands in front of the camera and you don't see much of the fight, you only see my hands and my reel. On the head it would be better, but uh, if you're putting it on your head, your head slips this way or another, then you change angles and you might end up with filming sky half of the day. You compromise in one way or another. There's also a neck strap that kind of it's a little rope that hangs on your neck and you attach your camera here. I haven't tried it. I think it's a nice option, but again, you need to try it yourself. Straps just go with cheapest you can find. Once you have camera or phone, second most important thing, and it's as important as your camera, is a microphone. Doesn't matter which camera you get, your audio will suck if you don't have a microphone. Don't go crazy about the microphone. I have the Rode Video Micro. It's the cheapest from Rode. Rode is really good microphone companies. There are others. Uh, you can find similar, but I really know Rode, and Rode makes great microphones. This is the cheapest one you can get from them. It has 3.5 millimeter jack that will not fit to your action cam, because action cams doesn't have that jack. You need an adapter. There is third party companies who makes the good adapters. I'll leave some names here, but you have to get a microphone if you're talking. If you're not talking at all, then you don't need it, obviously. But if you're talking, you record audio from any camera internally, it sucks. You need a microphone. This one costs like 60 euros, I think. So it's not that expensive. And the difference is day and night. This is an audio from my DJI Action 1. And this is the audio from my Sony with the microphone. So, for 80% of you, a good action cam and a microphone is all you need. Go out there, film, make your videos, you will have enough. For other 20% of you, you might be a fishing pro who's sponsored, who gets paid, who needs to advertise some type of fishing gear or you're just maniac like I am and you want to make a little bit more interesting videos a little bit better quality videos 
you need some extra things. This is debatable. Either you get a B cam or A cam, depends how you use it. Or instead the second camera, you get a drone. Drones nowadays are very important. This is my A cam. This is a mirrorless Sony A7C. It's not expensive in the camera world, but it's expensive in the meaning of not fishing related item. If action cam is around 250 to 400, the mirrorless cameras starts from around a thousand and it goes all the way to like six thousand euros this one costs around one and a half thousand and it also has an extra lens that's extra five six hundred euros so that's an investment but you also get the quality and you get the versatility this camera pretty much does everything i wanted to do except again 10-bit color. I'm not that flexible in the color grading area with this camera. I might do some color grading but nothing spectacular. Other than that, great battery life, shitty stabilization and great autofocus. If you're choosing your first mirrorless camera for this type of fishing, two brands, Sony or Canon. Others like Panasonic, Nikon and a few more there is. The video quality and the picture looks nice, but Canon and Sony has the best autofocus. And autofocus you really need while fishing. You will not go there to focus on you every time, then step out from the camera. It will be pain in the ass. Sony's and Canon's has the best autofocus. I'm in focus right now. If I get here, I'm immediately in focus again. If I move back here, I'm still in focus. So you get other camera. It might be one more action cam. You just put it on the tripod somewhere in a different direction and you film yourself from the side. This way you have two views. You have your A view, your action cam, and you get your B roll or B view that shows you from the side. If you're buying a drone, first of all, DJI. That's the company to go with. Don't think about anything else. They are the best, they have budget-friendly drones. Mini 2 is probably the cheapest I would get. And then there are Mini 3, Mini 4 Pros. That's probably the most I need from a drone, is the Mini 4 Pro. It has all the functionality you need. And if you're crazy about the drones, then there is Mavics and all the other, and you definitely don't need that. Good drone shot may increase your video views by a lot. I have a DJI Mini 2. That's almost enough for me. It was enough for me and it would be enough for most of you in terms of quality and what it does. It has a good flying distance, good record time, it has all the functions you need, it has even some uh, pre-recorded shots meaning it can loop around you or do whatever. I haven't even used those features yet. One thing the Mini 2 is missing is flat profile meaning when you record with very little color but you have better dynamic range dynamic range is the difference between your brightest brights and your darkest darks and the better your camera is the more of that gap you get so i'm not really sure you need to think about what are you planning to shoot more drone or B view as I call it. Another thing, if you get a camera, you need a tripod. Tripods suck. I don't want to buy one, it's not fun, it's just something you're not excited in buying. When you're buying fishing gear, you're buying your new lures, new rod, whatever, you're excited about that. When you're buying tripod, you're more miserable than ever. A decent tripod starts from like 60 to 100 euros. You need a sturdy one that will hold your camera and that will not break. The more expensive you go, basically the lighter it gets. Mine is a simple one, I paid like 70 euros for it. It's a metal, it weighs a lot, I carry it on the side pocket of my backpack. It gets tangled on the branches, on the trees. At one time I lost it because it got pulled out of my backpack this shot i can film holding my camera in the hand but just leaving it on the tripod is way nicer by the way did you see how it focused right there when i stood up 
that's an autofocus from a Sony. Few tricks and tips I can give you. First thing you need to know, the lighting is the most important thing for your quality when filming. Doesn't matter if you have your phone or a cinema camera. If you have a poor lighting, your image will suck. And that's a bummer because most of the fish are active in the dust or dawn. And there is not enough light then, then your video quality suffers. There's nothing you can do about it. You're not doing anything wrong. It's just how technology works. If you're filming at home, you can regulate that light. You could use any simple lamp at your home just either if you point it at yourself point it from the angle a little bit above yourself and on the side of your face then the other side gets a nice shadow you don't want a harsh white so you can put a baking paper on top of that lamp that will soften the light and it will look nicer or you can bounce it from the wall or anything that's close to it you just point it not at your face one of the biggest mistakes i see fishermen do when filming is using the wrong frame rate FPS the higher FPS you go it won't make your video look better it's not that what you want to do when filming you use 30 FPS if you're lazy and you use 24 FPS if you're looking for the best quality because 24 FPS is the closest to what human eye naturally sees. The best example I can give you, shaking my hand. This is 24 FPS. You see the blur it leaves? You can't see my hand normally. And this is 120 FPS. You see the difference? It's sharper and that is not what your eye see naturally. Either you film in 24, most of the cameras has like 23.9 or something, that's the same thing. Some of them has 24 exact or you film in 30 FPS. Most of the Hollywood movies are filmed in 24 FPS. The TV shows, the news on TV like uh, soap operas and so on are filmed in 30 FPS. 60 and 120 is for slow motion. That's another big misconception I see. Fisherman film something flying bird or running water in 30 FPS for example and then they slow it down in post-production and that clip is very jerky. It's because there is not enough frames in the video. If you want slow motion you film in 60 FPS and if your camera allows and it doesn't go below HD quality in 120 FPS you film in 120 and then you slow it down in post-production. Now how to do all that I will show in another video. I will make a separate video for how I cut all my videos and how I do all the post-production on the computer. A simple version but still it's a whole nother topic. Film some b-roll. B-roll is not the main frame meaning you film the surroundings, you film your baits, you film your fishing gear, whatever you see around you. Show us where you are. In that way the people who's watching your videos are more engaged with you. And another thing no one wants to look at my stupid face for two hours talking to the camera directly and not seeing anything else. They're just getting bored. You want to show the lure you're talking about. Film it on a different clip and put it above your talking head. Then you'll get the audio and you'll get the thing in close-up that you're talking about. Those clips on YouTube that start in the middle of someone pulling the fish already hooked and they are fighting with it then they land the fish and the video ends that's all i hate those videos people only watch them to see what happened and that's it if you're in that situation that you filmed a nice fish being caught film something later stash those clips together make it a little bit more interesting and all the rest basically is just creativity go out there with those cameras the things you got and think a little bit in the future how are you gonna put those clips together? I know it's not fun when you're fishing, especially when you have no bites throughout the day. You're trying to catch at least one fish, you wanna show something and you have no good media and filming something that's not direct fishing, it takes more time, you're rushing, but 
those clips will make your video. You get creative a little bit with some angles, different angles, shoot the same thing from close up, from far away, from above, from beyond, and it will make more interesting video. It's as simple as that. The more time you spend in, on all these things, the better final product you get. So, I hope this was helpful. Leave me comments on this video. What else information you need, what you wanna know, and I will answer you. Please do not write me a personal message because I will answer one person and all the rest of you doesn't know anything. A lot of time, a lot of people has the same question. So I'll just answer one in the comments and all of you get the same information. And also comments on the video helps my channel to grow because you bastards do not like to subscribe. So subscribe, please. Okay, I will better get going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you in the video about the post-production. Or something else, not sure what's coming first. Bye. But that's for another day. I just did the pizza thing in Italian. Very nice.